Thanks for watching this series about how to mix live music. I hope you've learned a lot. Now we've covered the theory of gain structure, EQ, dynamics, groups, and effects. Let's put it into practice. We have a live band coming in and we're going to do a sound check. Let's be reminded of everything we've talked about so far this series. Before we arrive at the venue, we should do some planning. Find out which instruments and singers are in the band. Make a stage plot and a channel list for the mixer. Select which microphones and monitor speakers to use. There are a few more things we could do in advance. Label the channels and connectors on the mixing console. Switch on phantom power for the channels that need it and apply high pass filters to all the channels except bass guitar, kick drum and music playback. We could assign channels to DCAs or groups and even do some panning. We should also find out about the venue and the event. The size and layout of the hall, number of people attending, style of music, any restrictions on sound pressure level due to local regulations or the organizer's wishes. All this information will help to decide how many and which types of loudspeakers and amplifiers to use. Once we're at the venue, hopefully there'll be time for some preparations before the band arrive. You should aim to have all the speakers, amps and mixers set up, and at least all the vocal mics positioned. And find time to set the system gain structure and output EQs before sound checking the band. Remember to use some familiar playback music to test the system's sound. Then use the vocal mics to find and cut the frequencies that cause feedback, both in the front of house PA speakers and in the stage monitors. Make sure you know which monitor speaker is connected to which AUX bus and check they are able to receive a good sound from the mixer. After that, you could set up a talkback mic to allow communication with the musicians without running back and forwards between stage and mixing position. Use a spare channel on the mixer or the dedicated talkback connector on MGP32X. Mute all the channels on the mixing console before connecting all the band instruments and microphones. This is easily achieved on the TF consoles by using the input mute button. Remember to enable plus 48 volts for the mics and DI boxes that need it. If you're setting up a band for the first time, I suggest you put all input gain, aux sends and fader levels to minimum before proceeding to avoid any unexpected sudden loud sounds. After everything is connected, unmute and start to check each input channel on the mixer is receiving the correct sound. Get each musician to play or sing at a normal level and set the input gains. Remember to use the Q or PFL buttons to set the level and hear the sound. Which order should you run the sound check? It's up to you. You might just need to check whoever is ready first if time is tight. Otherwise, I suggest you start with the silent instruments such as keyboards to stop those musicians getting frustrated while everyone else can practice their riffs. After the input gain is set, you could make a quick EQ adjustment if it's clear what needs to be done, such as reducing the low shelf for a female vocal mic. And now is the time to adjust mic position if you think it will find a better sound and recheck the gain and EQ. Then bring up the fader to check it can be heard through the PA speakers. Next, send the musician's input to their own AUX bus so they can hear themselves comfortably. Ask them to continue playing while you tweak their EQ. Do this for each input in turn, so eventually each musician will be able to hear their own instrument or voice in their monitors.
After you've established that all inputs and outputs are set up correctly, ask the band to play together for a minute. No need for a whole song, just long enough for the performers to consider any additional inputs they need to hear in their monitors. Make sure the sound is also coming through the PA speakers at this time, because it will affect the sound balance they hear. Try to make the musicians comfortable with their AUX mixes while making sure the stage volume doesn't get too loud for the room you are in. Remember that turning several channels down may be more effective than turning one up. Now the band should be ready to rehearse. As they play, you can check the balance of all the instruments and vocals, adjusting faders and panning accordingly. Consider whether to adjust any EQ to help an instrument either blend in or stand out. If you are using close tom mics, you can set up the noise gates at this time and evaluate any need for compression, reverb and delay effects. Be prepared to send any effects return channel back to an AUX bus in case the musician wants to hear it in their stage monitor. If the band is experienced, they might not want to rehearse, but rather save their energy for the performance. In that case, a multi-track recording of their previous performance would be a big help. So you can continue to refine the mix without the band. So in the final chapter of this series, we are going to look at live recording and virtual sound checks. See you again then.